So this is the Game Envy wet palette. It's great. And chock full of interesting innovations that sound like a real game changer. So after a month of testing, I can finally give an honest review. How is it to use? Do any of the features actually improve your painting? And is it worth it compared against some of the other options out there? So here we go. My name's James, and this isn't a sponsored video. I paid for this product with my own money by backing the Game Envy Kickstarter from a few months back. And although it was about four months late, the Kickstarter was incredibly well run and well communicated. Clearly the people behind this are passionate hobbyists that care about what they do. Products from companies run by passionate people always get a big tick from me. So I thought a fun way to tackle this would be to go over Game Envy's own product review videos and see if they live up to their own claims and their own hype. But I'll chuck in a few extra details where I think they're relevant. So the palette comes in four colours. Green, red, blue and black. First impressions were that this palette felt a bit chunkier and felt a bit smaller than I've been previously used to. But in actual fact when I compared them, it's not a lot thicker than the profile of the Redgrass Games palettes and it's only a little bit smaller than the Studio palette, so, hmm, don't know why I thought that. The seal on the palette is excellent. The four clips keep everything nice and tight, and the removable silicon ring looks like it'll last for years, particularly if you lubricate it. I also found that the paint's hyper-saturated and became all runny inside the palette, which essentially makes them useless for anything other than glazing. Now that's the same for any wet palette with a good seal and it can simply be fixed by leaving the top of the wet palette open and letting the water evaporate again. Now this is the point in the video where I prompt you to press all those buttons. If you haven't liked the video, by all means do so. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, by all means do that. And if you have a Game Envy wet palette, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Thanks a lot. To combat that, they've put a little vent on top of the palette. Now, when I tested this, it actually worked. The paints dried out more than I expected, but it stopped the paints becoming super hydrated and I was able to reactivate them all anyway, so amazing. What a great idea. Now I don't know about unsurpassed functionality, but it's got a little storage cubby on top of the palette. It's useful, you can store a couple of brushes in there as well as the dry palette that comes with it, but not a lot else. In fact, I found that I couldn't even store the blotting paper that comes in it without making the top bulge a little bit and it not close properly, so meh, that's a bit disappointing. The lid also doubles up as a stand for your phone. Now this sounds like a great idea, but I haven't been able to use it yet because I mainly paint at my desk and I've got a big monitor in front of me anyway. I imagine if I was traveling though, that could be kind of handy. Now I don't know about advanced palette supplies, but the paper works well, the sponge works really well, they stay hydrated, they keep your paint separate. What more could you want? You get a 50 in a pack and two sponges. Nice. My palette also came with a couple of neat little extras too a piece of blotting paper. In reality though, the blotting paper performed a little bit worse than say tissue paper, so nice idea, but it's not for me. On a better note though, it came with some copper tape, which you pop down in the bottom of the palette to reduce mold. Great idea, and it actually performs better than the coins or isopropyl alcohol, which you would usually use. Nice, what a nice idea. It also comes with a little squeegee, but this actually makes it a little harder to squeeze the bubbles out. I prefer using my fingers. And it comes with a dry palette. Now the dry palette is quite useful, particularly if you're using things like washers, because you've got individual little pots you can use it with and a little brush holder too. It's a nice addition and I'll definitely find myself using that. So before I jump into the usability of the wet palette, I just want to very quickly talk about cost because I feel it's the elephant in the room. The short version is this. If you're from the USA, the Game Envy wet palette is a really strong contender for something you should buy. The palette retails for $35 plus shipping, which makes it about the same sort of price as the Redgrass Games Painter wet palette, with all the additional features it has too. If you're from the UK though, it's a different story. As of recording this video, there are no current Game Envy stockists that I could find, so the only place to source the palette is from the USA itself. And although with the conversion rates, $35 translates for about £26, you then have to add shipping onto that, which costs another £15, which pushes the cost of the wet palette above 40 quid. That's just madness. That's more expensive than the Redgrass Game Studio wet palette, which is already a crazy expensive palette. Now you may argue that the extra features are worth it, 
but for me, they're not. Let's not mess about too much here. All wet palettes perform basically the same. My DIY wet palette performs basically the same as my much more expensive Redgrass Games palette, and this Game Envy version is no different. Essentially, as long as it keeps your paint moist so you can continue to using them for a long time, that's all you really need. Does the Game Envy palette do that? Yes. Are the extra features worth it? Yes. Maybe. It depends on your workflow. What I mean by that is, if you paint one or two models and tend to use Army Painter, Citadel, Vallejo, individual colours, then the smaller real estate of the palette will make no difference to you. If, however, you like to mix your own colours and make lots of fancy blends on top of the wet palettes, then you'll want a bit more real estate. I'm also a bit of a snob when it comes to stuff like this as well, and the exemplar palette just doesn't feel as expensive as the Redgrass game stuff. The sponges and paper aren't cut to shape. The plastics just feel a bit cheaper. It's just little things like that. In reality, they don't affect anything whatsoever. So if you like the palette, go for it. I'm still going to err towards recommending the Red Cross Game Studio wet palette though. I am going to keep this one around though because I think it'll be more useful when I travel. So to wrap up, the Game Envy wet palette is an amazing wet palette choice. It's an even better choice if you're from the USA and you're mainly painting armies with lots of single colours. If you're painting larger scale models or mixing lots of skin tones, it's a less good choice. And if you're from the UK, it's not a good choice at all. It's too expensive. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, make sure you've hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.